So, okay. Uh, yeah, so yeah. we've got... Well, I guess yeah. we have enough time to go over these exercises before going to a break and then wrapping up. So, yes. um, yes. Uh, yeah, so so if you cast your mind back uh, to, to an hour ago or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. we were talking about shared memory parallelism. And in in those times, we were talking about how do you how can you even leverage one machine? So so now we're talking about one computer. How uh, how can we leverage the resources available there? So we we saw the big picture that okay, there are these supercomputers where you can have like uh, thousands of computers that you can get there eventually if your pro program or problem is such that. It, uh, it can leverage it but even in those machines they are still uh, they are still single machines so even with this shared memory parallelization you can get a lot done and many like simplest way programs simplest things you need to parallelize are in the shared memory realm so let's look at the exercise so we can get a grasp on this okay I'll scroll back down to them. So are we going over them? Should we go over a few? Yes. What would you recommend do we do? Um, um, we don't see that many votes on we... did people manage to do ah. them or not. Uh, yes. Let's hope that people let's manage to do Let's go up to them. that HackMD. Yeah, so here we are. Um, so yeah, you can vote here what you thought of them. And yeah, I guess let's just go quickly. So we're, mm. because everyone's getting yeah. tired of yeah, yeah, I guess. having been here for so long. Let's, let's, we should... let's do the exercise one. I think that's a, that's a good example. Let's just run, okay. the, run with multiple CPUs and then uh, you, yeah. can, you can check the solution if you don't want to. But you, I think it's very okay. uh, quick to write yourself. So, oh. yeah. Got a cat on keyboard situation. Uh, uh, do you want me to okay. take over? No, I can still do it. I'll let you know if it gets too bad. So, okay, yeah. bigger examples of the Pi thing. So, should we do this with S run? Yes, let's just use S run. So, of course, all of these can be and should be done with the Slurm scripts. Uh, so, so if you're like actually running something, you don't want to always look up the parameters, uh, the S run parameters, and that sort of thing. So it's it's much better idea to uh, write the Slurm script. But for these demos and testing stuff out, S run is is good option as well. So let's add the number of iterations. So eight. Okay, if we start with one processor. Yeah. Or should we start? Let's start oh, with yeah. one, yeah. Okay. And should I use time on here? <clears throat> For example, like oh you can use SF to or let's... look at it afterwards. Yeah. Let's do it this way. So notice I'm putting time inside of S run to measure how long this takes. Yeah, time is, is this kind of like a program that you can use to, to time time the execution of some other program. But using SF is the like the better way, which you just need to then put the. Uh... Yeah. So you notice that we're not seeing anything right now, and that's because of the buffer. So it's waiting until enough is written before it appears yeah. on our screen. Yes, and it's 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 doing the calculation now. Do you know how long it should take? Uh, I think it was something like. Maybe we should uh, add, take one zero out or something. I, I think it was, uh, would, well, I think it was around maybe two minutes or something with one CP. Oh, so maybe okay. it will take a bit more so, too long. So yeah, if okay. we cancel that. So I just that, pushed Control yeah. C. Yeah. So maybe if you C to cancel. So yeah, maybe maybe okay. if you take one, one zero. zero out. Yeah. So now it should take what was it uh, two minutes or twelve seconds or something, okay. maybe. Yeah. Then 
title is count thing. Okay, there we yeah, go. So. so we see the usual yeah, pi was... estimate here, mm -hmm. and we also see this timing information. So it says 8.57 user seconds and this much time elapsed. So this is how much time happened on the wall clock, so real time. And this is how mm -hmm. much computation it did. Yeah, so you could use double. SF to check the same thing, but but yeah. Well, it's good enough. Yeah, if you so let's go. Yeah, to... let's try with two processes. So now we expect something like four seconds because the previous one was eight point six. So with a good packalization, like it's probably not going to be that. Yeah, so it was five point five. And if you this try with four, okay. Uh, what's interesting? Uh, let's do it with four first. Yeah. And then... Yeah, I would guess something like three seconds or, or four seconds, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, so remember, total CPU time and wall time. So notice this is what I was going to show. So if we compare these, the CPU time actually went up, and the wall time went down. Mm. So basically, it completed faster, but it used more CPUs in total because mm. we're using two CPUs for a slightly longer time. Yeah, and, uh, But the and difference the, here is not so much. Yeah, like the difference most likely from the 8.5 to 10 is the 1.5 that you need to set up all of the infrastructure for the multiprocessing. Like you need mm -hmm. to like create the multiple processes and that sort of thing. And that like takes time. Yeah. So in this case, like it probably takes the one one second and it doesn't matter yeah. if it's four or two or four if you create the infrastructure then it's already there yes okay um hmm. but but do you want to quickly show like the optimized version so so ah, the, okay. like the in the so so just to Which... iterate like in the i think it was exercise four or five like if you scroll down yeah, that, uh, no, sorry, uh, XS3. Uh, so, so there's an optimized okay. version there that uses NumPy. And NumPy has these like vectorized arrays. So if you're not doing individual like calculations, but you're doing like a bunch of calculations at the same time mm -hmm. using these better, better libraries. So if you try to run the optimized version, uh, if you increase the number to, to this kind of like, uh, if you give one, but you don't need to do multiple processors. Like you, okay. you can do it only with one processor, like CPS per task one, like, oh. yeah. Uh, there's a equals sign there. Yeah. Okay. So so, one so CPU... this is like an optimized version of or like slightly optimized. I, I didn't like go through the full like checking of, <laughs> but it's it's much faster. But if yeah. you try this out, okay. Yeah, it's like. Um, uh, okay, this num numpy is missing. So, Maybe you need to, uh, so load. I have to module load. Yeah, yeah. Anaconda. Did I have numpy installed on my? Why? Why did? Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, you need to load. Okay, but this is something we didn't realize. <laughs> yeah. So, so now it's running a ten version. times bigger pre. Problem. So it's running 10 times bigger problem and it took like two seconds. So, like, the speed up is like it's 10 times uh, times four. So it's like 40 times faster or something. So, like, like by small lot changes in your code, you can usually get much more speed up than just adding more processes there. So, it's usually a good idea to check what your like before starting parallelization, it's usually a good idea to like check is your code doing actually what you want it to do and can you do it, mm. do it using some better libraries because like this is something that happens all the time like so, just putting more more like uh power to the <laughs> to the mm. problem doesn't necessarily make it run any faster or, or it, you don't get mm. the same kind of benefit it's as not... optimization yeah yeah okay uh yeah are we good then let's see do we have any? Okay. Uh, yeah. So some, uh, I'll mention here, questions. like the 
300% CPU, that means in the time command that it basically used multiple CPUs. So it used 30, yeah. three, three and one third <coughs> of a CPU. So near four. CPUs. So, yeah, I guess you could say if we were using four CPUs, that would mean that we were, it took 10 seconds and used, uh, let's think, hmm. used about 30, three seconds of mm. CPU time inside of there. Yeah. There was a good question. How was this parallel? So this was using Python's multiprocessing module. So it basically started like this separate Python processes that each run this mm -hmm. application, this uh, function. Yeah. Uh, so, so there was basically a list and then it was like each yeah. of these processes got its own list, but you can look at the code itself, but many problems parallelize this. So for example, like R parallel package, MATLAB, MATLAB's parallel pool, Python multiprocessing, uh, Python NumPy, like NumPy libraries that Python uh, users often use, they use this so-called OpenMP parallelization, which is the same parallelization that's used by R. R itself uses this uh, OpenMP parallelization. So, so you can get multiprocessing without doing any changes to your code. Like in the background, it's, mm -hmm. it can use this parallelization. Like our futures use this parallelization. There's, there's like million libraries that use this kind of a parallelization scheme. Uh, like OpenMP, which is this kind of like a coding paradigm. You can use that to, mm -hmm. to create parallel programs. Uh, there's, there's like, like this is the word salad part. So, so let's not, <laughs> let's not go there. Yeah. There's, you can okay. find them, uh, there's information on the webpage, but, and there's uh, like, if you have any questions, does your program parallelize, uh, there's the, in the exercise for there's like certain words that you can usually set, check on your program's documentation that usually point to like, that the program is using some parallelization, like, like some of these words are used in the documentation usually to mean like, okay, like how many workers do I want to start and stuff like that. So, yeah, but uh, this is something that we don't want to get into because it's a, it's a whole can of worms. Yeah. Okay. Um, should we go to a break and come back in 10 minutes and then we will wrap up with the advanced parallelization types of things, which includes GPU and MPI. Yeah. Let's do that. OK, so break until uh, 5 past. Yeah, okay. and do remember to ask questions in the notes, because then we can answer, like, is this, is this the parallelization you yeah. mean? Ask in the mm -hmm. notes. Yeah. OK, see you soon. Bye.